so we're out here today in our pasture that's full of snow because winter here with our cow Bossy. And today we're going to talk about how to get started with a family milk cow. Whoa, oh, whoa, Bossy. She's going to come. <laughs> she's going oh, she's getting a little close to the camera. She's going to lick it. You're just going to eat it. Eat Bossy, no, don't do that. <laughs> oh, good. So we've had various animals here on the homestead. We started with chickens and then we got pigs eventually. And now we've worked our way up to a cow. And cows are definitely uh, a lot more work and they're a way bigger animal than uh, say pigs or chickens. And if you do have a milk cow, uh, you're gonna have it for a very long time. Yeah, between uh, eight and 10 years, some of, the, some of them will live. And so you gotta have a big shelter. They eat way more than a pig or a chicken. And so it's a big step up and um, we just want to make this video so you, we can prepare you for having a big animal. So for getting started with having a cow on the homestead, it can be a little intimidating. So we thought we'd go over today all things to get started with your own cow on your homestead. So the first thing to think about is what breed you want to have for your cow. And Eric's going to tell you a bit about Bossy's breed. So Bossy, she's going to walk away probably. Okay, so Bossy is, uh, she's half Speckle Park, half Holstein. Uh, Speckle Park is a beef breed and it's Canadian. So usually for a milk cow, people don't choose a beef cow for obvious reasons, but since she is half Holstein, we thought she would probably do pretty good for a milk cow. A Holstein would give a lot of milk for a family, probably too much milk. And then the breed of cow, that's a classic black and white. It's on the carton of most milk that you buy. So we wouldn't want a pure Holstein. It's not very common for a homestead, but for her, we like that she's half beef. It'll reduce how much milk we get, which is okay with us, but it'll also make the meat that we get higher quality. So when you have a homestead cow, you can have them for your milk, but they need to be able to, to produce milk, so they need to have babies to do that. And when she has a baby, we'll raise that calf up for meat. And so since she's half beef, her offspring will be nice to have for meat. You can still raise dairy cows for meat. And that tastes all right, we've eaten it before. She's coming to the camera again. <laughs> Bossy. So some people like to start with maybe a Jersey cow. They're a really common homestead cow because they're a smaller breed. They give higher butter fat content, which means the milk has more cream on it. And therefore you can make more things like butter. She's gonna knock that camera over. Yeah, quite possible. Bossy. Bossy, no, no, hey, 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 stop that. Bossy, that's my camera. There you are. Yeah, she is. <laughs> okay, let's fix this, dear. So there's a lot of different breeds of cows out there. Like Maggie said, the most popular, well, in our area anyway, is the Holstein, which is your classic black and white dairy cow. And they can get, they're very big uh, cows. Uh, they produce a lot of milk. They're hardy, they're uh, readily available. And so that's an option. Um, Jerseys, another popular option, they're smaller. Uh, they have high butter fat content. Um, they're easy to handle usually. Easy to handle, but they are also very, very um, curious and <laughs> even more so than a lot of other cow breeds. So just be wary of that. There's also Guernseys, which mm. are a smaller breed. They're white and brown. We've worked with Guernseys. Yep. We really like them. They're, they're like a Holstein, but smaller. They also too have high butter fat. They're a rare breed. Not a lot of farms around that have them. Uh, then you get into other dairy breeds are uh, Airshare, which is like a Holstein too. Uh, they're a dark brown and white cow and they would produce similar to what a Holstein does. Again, they're not uh, really common around our area. There's a couple farms. And then lastly, brown swish, which uh, are popular in other areas uh, of Canada and the United States, but around here I've never seen a brown swish cow. Bossy. But they can be big and uh, Sorry. apparently really, really docile. And there's the short horns. And then there's milking short horns which were uh, traditionally a beef breed that then kind of transitioned into milk. Basically, whatever's readily available in your area, I would recommend because the easier to get a hold of, I mean, that's what you're going to have. So as you can see, cows are super, super curious animals. Uh, they're not quite as smart as a pig, and but they will get into anything and everything. And um, I've worked with cows most of my life on and off. And anytime I'm working around them with tools or anything, they end up licking or trying to eat the tools. 
and Bossy, a good example of that, she tried to eat the camera basically <laughs> right there. So you got to be wary of that. They're, like I said, they're not extremely smart, but they'll get through fences. They'll, you know, wreck yeah. stuff up pretty quick. It makes them horrible. We've, we've only had her get out of our fence once. I'm just saying, dude. <laughs> that for our fence, what we have is we have electric fence and she's very respectful of the electricity. The only time she has escaped is when we were working on the fence and electricity was off. She figured it out and she went on a little jaunt. But we get her back. But most of the time cows are pretty respectful of fences if they still have electricity going through it and they have all the things they need inside of their area. So if uh, the more space a cow has the better. Like I said they're quite a big animal and uh, we have a section pastured off her uh, bossy and in the spring summer and fall she will eat a little bit of grass we obviously don't have as much room as we would like to have her on grass but it's better to have bigger spaces because it cuts down on the manure and cows they do tear up the ground sort of like a pig does and so the more space the better uh, we keep her outside almost all of the time uh, we have built an outdoor shelter for her but she lives outside all year round Ideally, it'd be nice to have an acre or two or five and a rotator on it for grass, for grazing. That would be awesome. We don't have that. We probably have her on less than a quarter of an acre, I would say. Probably. It's a long... Maybe a little more. Maybe a little more. It's a long, thin strip going up beside our horse pasture. And so in the summertime, the front section, it has some trees and she really likes that. It's good for shelter before we had our shelter that we're building and just have something for her to scratch on she likes scratching on the trees yeah, cows like to scratch. it gives something to play with she likes that and then the horses keep her company because they're right over the fence from her which is nice it is nice to have two cows they have each other but she's content with just her we have a goat and the ponies beside her and so she's pretty happy the pasture that we have her on, the back section has some grass and we'll rotate her on and off of that in the summertime. It's nice to be able to do rotation. Ours is a super small scale rotation. It's only enough for a few days. Then we take her off it, shut the fence, let it grow, put her back on it. But it still gives her something to enjoy and keeps the grass growing back. If we didn't rotate, there would be no grass eventually. So that's a really good thing to do, even on a small space with your cow. So like we said, Bossy, she eats some grass, but obviously we don't have enough grass to graze her all the time, so she eats hay also. Uh, we give her about uh, one full bale a day, so half a bale in the morning, half a bale uh, in the evening. And we pay about $4 a bale, Square bale yeah. a day for her. Now that would change where you are drastically, but for us here in Eastern Canada, that's what we pay for hay. We were given her a round bale in the summertime, but we found she wasted a lot of it. Uh, cows will tramp it down and lay in it, and so you get Poop a lot of it. yeah, you get a lot of wastage with a round bale unless you got feeders, and so we prefer square bales for feeding her. She's getting into the lumber. <laughs> oh. So there's lots of options with grain. Uh, some people don't feed any grain whatsoever. We like to feed grain. She's grown really good on it. Here, bossy. Yeah, bossy, 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 bossy. There's different applications if you want to just get them for beef. Uh, you can get what you call a beef builder. Uh, some people just feed corn, cracked corn. Uh, we've done, we tried a little bit of everything. Uh, we some people feed soybeans. Yeah, soybeans. We did uh, something called bova stretch, uh, which made her grow really, really good early on in her life. But right now, all she gets is oats. So uh, three quarts in the morning and three quarts in the evening. Yep. And they are crushed oats so that they yeah. are easier to digest for herself. Some people also feed spent grain. So we have a friend that raises Angus cows just for beef and he doesn't feed any store-bought grain. He only feeds spent grain. I was over there visiting. His cows looked awesome. He's a very, very experienced cowman and he only feeds that. So it's an option if you have a local brewery in your area, you might be able to get some spent grains from the beer making process. Another option is a uh, silage, either round baled or chopped, but that's more if you're farming on like a large scale, that works better. We have got silage bales for Bossy before and she loves it, but it's just, it doesn't really make sense for us just having one single cow. Um, it will go bad. Yeah, it spoils on you. It's hard to handle. Uh, we did have uh, some chopped corn silage actually that we got in bales, which was great. She loved it, but uh, same thing. It's hard to handle. It doesn't really make sense if you just have one cow. Also, if you have horses like we do, where she shares a fence, if a horse gets silage, you can kill them. So I don't really want to have it on this property where we have a lot of horses here. So it's ideal if you have a lot of cows. Something we feed Bossy along with her hay and her grain is a salt block. And we just have it out 
left here all the time and she can lick it when she wants to. It has minerals in it and so it helps get anything in her diet that she might be missing from just having hay and grain. Mm -hmm. And obviously uh, she needs fresh water uh, at all times if, if it's preferable. We've had a big tank that she shared with the pony but we've since moved that so now we just got her on uh, buckets but like I said morning and evening chores we make sure she's got a bucket of fresh water and then in the summer months uh, when it's above freezing we have a half a barrel I basically cut in half and I fill up for her and that does her uh, they do drink a lot of water they always got to have fresh water like most animals probably would depend on what size cow you have too yeah so we've covered how much space they need the food they need the water minerals something else to really think about before you bring a cow home or any large animal to your homestead is what you have access for for a vet so our vet is awesome we love him he's been our vet for a long time since i had my horse when i was a teenager and he comes here to check bossy out for us and helps us anytime we have any issue and that's really awesome however not everyone has access to a vet so before you come home with a cow especially if you're going to have a dairy cow you'll be needing to breed that cow and so having a vet on speed dial and just being able to help you if you get in a bind because like Eric said they like to get into things and they can easily hurt themselves and it's really important to be able to have medical assistance if you need it. So it depends on what you want to do with your cow if you're reading, breeding it for beef you buy it as a calf uh, you basically feed it for a year uh, sometimes a year and a half and then you butcher it if you're just doing beef. Now with us uh, we got a heifer and so shortly after we got it I decided it would be a good idea to breed her. Um, so she came into heat uh, in last fall and that was the first time she was in heat. She was roughly about a year and six months old when she had her first heat. And that will depend on the breed how early yeah. they come in heat. Yeah. yeah and so basically one day I went out I noticed that on her uh, rear end she had some uh, dried blood so that means that and that was the first time I'd seen that and so that means she had had her first heat. And she the, acts very frisky. Yeah the cow will moo a lot it'll be restless uh, if you have more than one cow uh, other cows will attempt to mount it and so that shows that the cow's in heat. Now with the blood on her tail uh, that basically showed us that she had been in heat and then the blood comes a couple days after and so when you see that you can basically count back 19 days 19 days and that'll give you the day she was in heat now it's a 21 day heat cycle yeah typically cows come into heat every 21 days that varies some and so uh the first time she came back into heat uh called a local farmer who i am friends with and uh, he also does a little breeding on the side and he came and bred her uh, but it uh, didn't take so it was either too early most likely too late that we got her bred it's a very short window and so we had to wait another 21 days. She's coming for the camera again. <laughs> and then uh, this time she came back into heat. Uh, she didn't show as many signs this time. Bossy. So you got to be wary of that. But if you count, it should be pretty accurate. So even though she wasn't really showing a lot of signs, she wasn't mooing a lot or being restless, I got the guy to come and breed her. And then I uh, kept an eye on her after 21 days and she didn't come back into heat. And so that basically tells you that she did uh, catch. So, what was it, a week ago, we had the vet come and check her. You have to wait about uh, roughly a month, if not more, to get the a pregnancy check done. So when he came, Eric held Bossy, so she didn't move around, and he had his ultrasound machine. He puts it up inside of her, and he was able to look. Now, let's move over a little further and take a look at your baby. Do you think there's a baby in there? There is right there. <gasps> See it looks like head? a rabbit. <laughs> yeah, so that's the umbilical cord, that long thing right there that I'm kind of going in and out on. And he said that she's two months along, yeah. and when we asked, that meant that uh, it's unlikely that she should lose that baby. And so it's currently January, and so she's two months long, so she'll be due in August because they're pregnant for nine months. So the end of August, we should have a baby calf. <laughs> and we're very excited about that. Hey boss. And we're hoping she's a good mother. Not all cows are, but the Speckle Park breed is said to be very good calvers and good mothers. So we're hoping that that's true. So we bred her to a, a Black Angus bull. And I did some research and Black Angus, hey bossy, stop that. He's into the screws now for the shelter. Black Angus usually, uh, produce small calves which is good especially for a first time uh, 
cow giving birth. Uh, you want a small calf. You don't want a great humongous calf because it's really, really hard. Uh, you wouldn't want to breed to a whole steen for her because yeah. it would be too big. Yeah. So we pick black Angus and because they're just, it's good uh, quality beef. And so she was bred artificially and how you find someone to breed your cow, you can either find a local dairy farmer and most dairy farmers do it themselves. And if you talk to them, they might be able to come out and you might be able to hire them, come out and breed your cow. Or there's in our area, the second guy that we had come, it's his like side job is to come breed yeah. cows, right? Yeah. So we asked our vet and he gave us the name of a guy and then Eric just looked up a guy. And there's a few of them in our province that will come and breed your cow and you tell them what breed of cow you're looking for. They'll bring the semen and they'll do everything for you. And it was like, what, $50? No, it was more like $92. $90? Okay. So, but for us, it's worth it. We would not know what we're doing to artificially inseminate our cow. And to move her to a bull, to leave her, that would be a bit much. So it's worth it for us to breed her artificially. So if you're looking for someone, just look up in your area, dairy farms, and they might be able to help you or ask your vet, and they'll probably be able to give you the name of someone that can come and breed your cow for you. If you're interested in getting a family milk cow, if you look on Kijiji, sometimes you can find them. Often they can be expensive. I just did this just to check it out. And there were like two in all of Eastern Canada. And they were like $3,000 for a cow that's lactating or bred back. So you have different phases of the cow. You have the calf you can buy, which is a baby. You'll have to grow. You'll probably have two years before you can have a calf. So she'll be around two. She's just going to turn two, two this month. So she'll be two and a half by the time we get any milk from her. Then you have heifers, which are cows. But she would be considered a heifer now, right? Yeah, she hasn't given birth. She's never given birth. That would not be my recommendation to get because they're large enough to be harder to handle and they're not milking yet. So you could and immediately breed them. It might be cheaper than buying a cow that's bred back. But if it's your first time, it might be a bit much to have a first time mother as well. It might be easiest to get a cow that's either bred back and she's already had a baby before so she knows what she's doing. She knows how to be milked because they have to get used to you touching their teats and stuff. And it might just be easiest but they're probably going to be the most expensive. So the ones I found were around $3,000. That's a lot. Um, but if you can afford it and it's your first time, you get milk right away. Sometimes you can buy ones that are in milk and they can keep keep milking them and it might be easier for you for your first time so that'd be ideal option but it's expensive so we went with the, the other option i recommend would be getting a calf and we did this because it was a lot cheaper than getting a milk and cow and also you don't have to be prepared for everything all at once you can be prepared for the calf to come home and then you have time to get used to handling a cow you can decide what you want to do with it and then you can learn to milk in a couple years once you already have all the husbandry stuff down how to how to care for the cow so when we got bossy as a calf we uh, she was i think a month old or mm -hmm. six weeks old oh, she was when cute. we got her and so uh, right away we start I started halter training her and was a, we bottle fed her every morning uh, when she was young and so we handled her she was used to people she's always been used to being handled and I've you know haltered her from the first time we got her so now I can go in the field grab her put a halter on her lead her around and she knows what she's doing uh, a cow has to be trained to that some cows uh, if you do not handle them can be quite wild and, and dangerous. dangerous to yeah. milk Yep. So especially for a family. So we recommend if you get a calf, you halter train it mm. and work with it, be around it, touch it, pet it, make sure it's used to people because, uh, like I said, they can be kind of wild if not handled. <laughs> oh, easy as pie, eh? She didn't like that you said she was halter broke. As you can see, sometimes she likes to run away a little bit when she sees the halter because sometimes it means, you know, a vet check or I'll lead her around the yard just to practice. So, But usually she lets me catch her and she might try to run a little bit, but I've had a lot of experience over the years with cows. So. <laughs> I've been run over by a few. 
So simple rope halter, the thick part goes over the nose and then you can tighten it around her nose and then behind her ears. So that's how the halter goes on just like that. And this one, it's like adjustable basically. She's used this for most of her life. When she was a, a really, really little, we had an even smaller halter for her, but this will work for her. And it's like I said, super simple. So a calf that you get to treat, teach yourself is a good option or an already trained cow for your first time. That would be a recommendation. The cheap way be the calf. How much did we buy Bossy for? She, Cause she was a heifer. Uh, she and was, she was a nice meat breed. She was uh, $700. But sometimes you can find these half dairy, half beef breeds yeah. that are heifers, especially if you have a high milk area. So in our area, there's a lot of dairy production. And because of that, a lot of the dairy farmers will breed their heifers to a beef cow, like artificially. And then they get a half beef like her and they can sell it. And that way it's a little different income for them whereas if they're just breeding their cows to beef um, dairy cows they'll get more dairy cows so they can keep them but people aren't going to be as interested in buying them because they're only going to be selling the boys so if they get these half beef ones people might want to buy the boys more likely because then they can raise them for beef but she was bred to a beef cow she happened to be a heifer the d dairy farmers aren't going to want her because she's not a purebred dairy cow and so we were able to buy her yeah, and so, like I said, we were willing to pay a little bit more money because she was, in fact, a heifer. And so there was that option to breed her, and if all goes well, she should have several calves for us. Yeah. And then with her calves, we can either sell them for other families to have her family milk cow if we were to breed her to maybe another milk breed, or we can have her calves to be raised up for beef for our homestead. So when we first got Bossy back here, she had no shelter because uh, we were living in a different uh, area. And we moved back here, didn't have time to build her a shelter. It was thankfully uh, May, so we just turned her out. And she, like I said, cows are hardy. They're tough animals. She can stay outside, uh, you know, in the rain and the heat. She has shade from the tre trees in here. And we always give her lots of water, so she's fine in the heat. She gets wet. I mean, they just beat off kind of like a duck when they get wet. We <laughs> have brought her into the barn, you know, a couple times to dry off. It's but, a really bad day. But now that she is with calf, uh, I've been putting a drive on to build a shelter for her because as uh, this summer, she'll be quite pregnant. We want to keep her out of the heat. And the wind. Yeah, and the wind and the rain and any kind of damp weather. We don't want her to get sick or, uh, you know, have any complications. So today in February, I'm really trying to get the shelter finished. Eric started this shelter before the winter came. He got the skeleton of it done, the frame of it. The roof. And the roof on. He had a friend come help him with that. And now he's getting the walls on. Now that we found out that Boss is pregnant, we want to get her a nice shelter. She shares it with the pony. So there's a fence down the middle. Halfs for Bossy Cow. Halfs for the pony he's a little monkey and <laughs> they get along now at first the pony didn't think she was very good company but now he uh, is okay with her eric's been working on it today he's gonna get back at finishing up the walls and then in the spring we'll go and paint it to seal it up we can't paint when it's this cold outside so it'll just get her out of the wind for the rest of the winter yep. and keep her happy and keep her baby healthy so in the end of August, we'll be having a calf. So in seven months, we're excited to share with you how that goes. And then we'll be able to show you the whole milking process. So there's lots to learn about milking. We used to work on a dairy farm, so we've milked before, but I'm sure it'll be a new experience with a bossy cow here who's never been milked. That's something we like to do is touch her teats to get her used to it. And so <laughs> something you can practice if your cow isn't in milk yet, and she will be, and she's a little calf, just get her used to you touching everywhere and then it'll be easier when it comes time to milking. So we hope this helps. If you're getting started with a family milk cow, some things to think about, what to look for, and we wish you the best of luck with your homesteading journey. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you on the next one. Yeah.